high. We will continue from the last session where we have left. Uh, so fixed income products, we have discussed about uh, certain interest rates like LIBOR. Today we will be discussing about uh, some other interest rates like we have overnight rates repo swap rates OIS first we will take overnight rates these overnight rates we are talking about when banks lend inter, uh, interbank lending happens so you have one bank bank A lends to bank B on an overnight basis one day so it will lend to B the next day B will give back the money with interest so this is if this is principal this is be principal plus interest why this when this is happening is when you have a central bank and there are cash liquidity requirements are there daily you have to maintain certain portion of your liabilities as cash with your central bank then there will be certain banks which will be having surplus amount of funds for example let's say it has 100 uh, is the liabilities I am just giving an example and if it the 4 percent is the amount that it has to keep with the central bank then 4 has to be kept with with central bank some bank will have more than this amount required amount and some will be in deficit less than what is required to be kept with the central bank then the bank the bank which is having surplus will give the transfer the cash to the bank which is in a deficit and that transfer will happen on the account that a is maintaining with the central bank from uh, the account of A to the account of B it will go like this so both the accounts are with the central bank only now this principle and then on the very next day it will again uh, come back the money will come back from B's account and get credited back to A's account with the interest this interest uh, is determined by the interest rate called the overnight interest rate yeah. in US this is called the federal funds rate you might have seen that they have the federal reserve chairman they announce um, very regularly what will be the target federal fund funds rate sometimes they say that it is 0 to 0.25 percent like this so that means this lending from one institution to the another can happen within this route somebody will quote may lend at point uh, 1% somebody may lend at 0.2% so that is the interest rate will be called as federal fund rate funds rate there will be a weighted average so somebody will uh, do in 100 million 
dollar, somebody will do 200 million dollar. So that weighted average will be taken and the term will be called as effective, effective federal funds rate. EFFR. So uh, normally that will be published on a daily basis by the Federal Reserve. And this all happens, this transfer happens only in the ledger of the central bank. And as you see that this is the unsecured interest because there is no movement of any collateral is happening or securities are happening between A to B or B to A. So that is why this interest rate is called is, is an unsecured transaction. We will go to another uh, type, it's called the repo transaction, which is a secured type of transaction. What happens in the repo? We finished overnight rates, we will go to repo. So similarly, repo also there will be two parties. So I am keeping the same as A and B. But repo is a secure transaction as I have mentioned. So if it is a secure transaction, so there will be one will be the cash will be moving and the other side will be the security will be moving. What happens is, let's say A has the, again same example, let's say A has the surplus money and B is in deficit of cash. This is not for that cash management with the central bank. In a regular basis, suppose B needs to, B has very short of cash. There is huge uh, amount of cash has been withdrawn from the B's uh, ATM counters and B is actually running short of cash. So what it will go is that it has the securities. It gives the securities to B and tells that give me cash in return. Now it is not an outright sell. So that means the securities are not permanently transferred to A. Rather all these the agreement is that after some days this securities this is the leg one so these securities have to be transferred back to B after some days and this cash also has to be transferred back to A. So this second leg obviously the same securities will come back here but the cash will be will be added with the interest so rather cash both will be in the cash but I'll say principal so principal plus interest will be coming back to A so this is why this is called a security transaction because of the involvement of the securities or the collaterals that are moving okay most of these report transaction this is a completely report transaction and a is called the a, a is transferring the who is transferring b is in our case b is first leg it is transferring with a promise to uh, buy them back so b becomes the buyer repo buyer and this is the repo seller okay so this entire transaction is called repo 
there is one task for you and all we are uh, discussing is is from the repo seller's perspective so there is a task for you you can find out what is the similar transaction if you look from the buyer's perspective so that will be passed on the screen and you will be you find out the answer and write down in the in the comments of this video then comes the swap part we will go to swap in a swap it's actually same it is between two different parties let's say bank a and bank b so swap is the exchange between two cash flows essentially one side will be the fixed cash flow the other side will be the floating cash flow i will trade which side which part by this things arise is let's say bank a has different depositors right so if they have depositor base now let's say these are all fixed interest bank is a is paying them the fixed interest okay so and these are borrowers these are borrowers so they are paying uh, floating uh, interest rate to the bank a now what happens if we will take the interest rate goes up if the interest rate goes up then the depositors bank a is continue to pay the depositors the fixed amount of interest but what is happening in the borrowers case is that the borrowers will continue will start giving more and more interest to the bank a so in that case when the interest rate is is uh, going up bank a is actually is in, in a much stronger position is in actually in a beneficial position but what will happen if if interest rate goes down the moment interest rate goes down bank a anyway it continue to pay the depositors at the fixed rate of interest so this amount is fixed but what happens to the borrowers paying to the uh, bank a that will slowly slowly it will get reduced so for bank a it becomes a negative cash flow kind of situation that means whatever interest it is paying uh, to the depositors is not able to be compensated by the borrowers paying it through the loans to paying the interest to, to their loans so to avoid such kind of scenario their risk management department of the bank a will try to transfer some of the uh, portfolio to another willing partner in the market let us say bank b or say it is a corporate is to, is willing to take some part of the risk of bank a now what bank a will now try to do is since it is receiving the floating it will try to give the floating side to the blank bank b and it will it will try, in return it will receive the fixed amount normally this floating is always benchmarked against certain benchmark rate
benchmark rate plus some spread. The very popular benchmark is London Interbank of World Rate that last time we discussed and plus some spread normally comes is 200 BPS or, or 300 BPS. What is this BPS is 100 BPS. BPS is called stands for basis points. 100 basis points is equal to 1%. You will frequent, be frequently asked in your exams and finance. You will find in BPS terms. This spread normally will be mentioned in BPS terms. So you should remember that 100 basis points is equal to 1%. So normally we are discussing about the floating interest rate. So it will be on the benchmark rate plus some spread. And it will ask the bank B to give a certain fixed interest rate. Now let us say that the LIBOR plus 2 and he is getting a fixed interest rate of 4%. Now this does not happen on just one period. It happens over a period of time. For example, what how the it will happen is let us say it is a two year it's a two year agreement yeah so bank a bank b so this side will present as a and this side will present as b on the very first time they will decide for the next what is the floating so bank A and bank B the cash flows normally happens on a netted basis this is called a netting so that means if A has to pay more to B then the payment will happen only that the difference amount not the uh, total amount. Let us say if this is 100 million dollar is the is called the notional amount because this amount does not get exchanged. It is only determined that how much interest has to be paid or received to only to determine that part this notional amount is fixed. So in 100 million Whatever interest A has to pay to B or B has to pay to A, they actually get netted among them. For example, let's say the first LIBOR is something like 2% or say 1%. We will start from 1%. If LIBOR becomes 1%, what happens? The total rate becomes 3%. So this is normally the annualized. So this is let's say six months, six months, six months, six months, and it's a two year period. So six months, first six months it will be LIBOR is one plus three percent. So obviously it will have like three percent divided by two is one point five percent of the notional because we are talking about only six months. So the other side he is going to Okay, this is actually bank A is receiving. So we are discussing about bank A will receive the fixed. So that means B is going to pay the fixed. So B is going to pay the half of this 4%, that is 2%. And bank A is going to pay bank B as 1.5%. Yeah. So net each half a percent of the notional amount that the bank B is going to pay. So what is that 100 million into half a percent? That is 0.5 million. So the 100 million into 0.5 percent will be the payment. So that is 0.5 million. Where it will move from which side? It will move from B side to A side. So at the, uh, once this netted happens, it will only remains that 
A is going to receive a 0.5 million. That's the millicytomite is going to happen. So similarly, if let's say it on the next six months, if it goes to from 1% to 2%, then your 2% plus 2% is 4%. Then B is going to pay at 4%. A is going to pay B as 4%. So nobody, finally the payment to each other becomes nil and nobody is going to pay to any other. So let's say for the next six months, it has become, LIBOR has become 3%. Now what happens is 3% plus 2% becomes 5%. So the floating A to B becomes 5%. So that means for six months it will become 2.5%. And for anyway, this is always fixed at 2%. So, A's liability to B uh, is 2.5% is exceeding 0.5% here. So, therefore, the finally what will happen is A is going to pay 0.5 million over here. So look at the direction of the arrow. Initially, A was receiving 0.5 million, but here, because of the interest rate movement, A is now paying B as 0.5 per million. So what happens is that whenever this interest rate, the floating interest rate goes up, then the fixed rate, this is called the fixed rate pair and this is the so bank A becomes the fixed rate receiver or the floating rate payer bank B becomes the fixed rate payer so if the interest rate goes up if interest rate goes up then obviously who is at a loss it is the fixed rate receiver or the fixed rate payer. It is the fixed rate receiver that is going to be at loss. So interest rate went up. Interest rate means it is the benchmark interest rate or the market interest because that is at the floating side. So floating side, if the interest rate goes up, it is the person who is paying the uh, floating rate, he will be at the disadvantage and the person who is paying the floating rate is the person who is going to receive the uh, fixed rate so the person who is receiving the fixed rate he will be at a loss if the interest rate goes up the person who if interest rate goes down then obviously the person who is paying the fixed rate interest he will be at a loss because if the interest rate goes down the floating rate go, obviously goes down and the fixed rate payer is continue to pay at a higher interest rate so he will be at a loss so now two situation the if the interest rate goes down bank b is at a loss or the fixed rate payer is at a loss if interest rate goes up then the fixed rate receiver is going to at a loss. Now this interest rate, this fixed interest rate is called the swap rate. So swap rate will be always that fixed interest rate for a particular floating interest rate. Normally in uh, market it is the six months labor versus normally it is six months labor which is very frequently used 
there is another it's uh, three months labor is also very frequently used so you will find uh, these references to these two uh, benchmark interest rates in, in many of the uh, examples so this will be the most of the cases this will be the floating rate benchmark and uh, you will find the that fixed rate it will be called as the Schwab rate actually we will discuss lot many things about uh, when we will go deep into the uh, Schwab rate uh, so uh, today it is almost uh, we are come to an end uh, next time we will discuss about uh, OIS uh, overnight index swap and uh, this is an extension of swap so swap we saw that the intermediate uh, cash flows are happening uh, on after certain period of time but uh, in case of an overnight index swap in case of an overnight index swap actually the interest rates uh, are effective from every day changes so day one day two day three day four something like okay so you have r1 r2 r3 r4 r5 like that because d1 d2 d3 because every day and what is these rates that we discussed about the overnight rates so these rates will be effective rates for this overnight index swap so mostly this uh, fed funds rate of overnight rates are used and uh, they are determined so normally i'll just talk you you think about that let's say you have invested about p so after certain period of time after one day what will happen in your future value so you stand here let's say you have f1 f2 these are our future values so you have f1 is equal to p into 1 plus r1 then what will happen f2 that will become f1 for that principal becomes f1 into 1 plus r2 or if i will write p into 1 plus r1 into 1 plus r2 so this is how then you go and you have fn let's say here fn final after the tenure lot normally every three months it gets let's say settled so what happens is fn maybe it is 90 days whatever is that you will see that p into 1 plus r1 into 1 plus r2 a 1 plus r to the r n actually so if i will tell that look i have to have one rate so our earlier formula if i take f n is equal to let's say we will say p into 1 plus r which is that overnight rate simply i am keeping r and divided into what we have uh, discussed m r by m m into n right so if we, we are now talking about in terms of a daily then this will be like n is the number of periods so we will find out the daily and we will just this, this is let's say this is r is equal to daily i don't want to keep this m anymore so 1 plus r to the power n n when n becomes the number of days that's it so just made it so simple so 1 plus r to the power n if i will substitute this fn here p into 1 plus r to the power n is equal to this so what happens here p p i can cancel it out so 1 plus r to the power n is equal to 1 plus r1 into 1 plus r2 like this into 1 plus rn right so if i will say 1 plus r will become nth root of 1 plus r1 into 1 plus r2 dot 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 1 plus rn right 
so then what happens then you have r will be equal to nth root of this 1 plus r1 into 1 plus r2 dot 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 into 1 plus rn minus 1 so you can see that this is in a, in a geometric progression so if i will say that 1 plus r1 then the and we are taking nth root then it becomes a geometric progression so it is the geometric mean so it is find out like this the interest rate the effective interest rate of a, an overnight uh, index swap the r becomes the nth root of 1 plus r1 and these r1s are uh, called as uh, overnight uh, interest rate for one day and whatever number of days you take and since this is floating the other side will also be uh, since this is a swap it is be fixed versus floating so when this is the floating interest rates are overnight index rates overnight rates obviously it will be receiving the person who is paying the floating rate obviously have to receive also uh, the fixed interest rate that fixed interest rate will be called as ois for example how it will happen is let's say a and b it will be determined so a will say he will pay to b i am keeping it and let's say he is giving at floating and this is fixed so we are now here the in case of a ois the floating interest rate will be let us say it will be fed funds rate okay that it will be told that the fed funds rate will be the benchmark and every day it will be um, calculated so every 3 months the cash flow will happen now the fed funds rate uh, will be the floating side and the fixed rate that a is going to receive this will be called as ois rate the fixed rate that will be called as ois rate this is very very important in uh, particularly after the labor scandal has happened that i have discussed in the previous class this has got many significance actually the significance has improved so even uh, in intern bank market the liquidity uh, how much liquidity is there that is determined by uh, normally the libor ois spread so this spread normally will determine how much stress is there in the market because this overnight uh, index swap is determining the overnight rates right is actually coming from the overnight rates because they only determine what will be the ois rate will be now if overnight index uh, swap the rate and the libor rate then the, if there is too much of a divergence that means the uh, people are preferring the overnight rates and these overnight rates normally what we discussed is the it represents the borrowing and lending rates of the central bank so obviously that you you can imagine that people do not believe in libor rather people believe in ois or overnight rates because if overnight rates remain low obviously the ois rate will remain low and if the libor is going up that would indicate that libor is interbank lending basically that we have discussed in the last class so if this spread is wide in normally it is 15 to 20 basis points but in the financial crisis is actually improved to 364 basis points around in in during the crisis period so imagine the kind of uh, increase in the libor ois spread had happened so that indicates that nobody believe on the libor people only believe in uh, overnight rates so I hope uh, things are very clear. Next time we will go into YTM, then uh, zero coupon rate, etc., which will lay the will lay the foundation for higher concepts. Okay. So uh, thank you for watching, and uh, 
you will find lot of uh, you will find lot of tasks given over uh, the cards over here displayed on the screens and then you find out the answers and uh, submit in the comments box uh, here so thank you